This is the sergeant, who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Say to the king, the knowledge of the broil as thou didst leave it. Doubt for it stood, as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their art. The merciless MacDonald, from the western hours of supply, and fortune on his damned crow smiling showed like a rebel's whore. But all's too weak for brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves that name. Disdaining fortune with his brandy steel, which smoked with bloody execution. Like Valor's minion, carved out his passes till he faced the slave. Which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him till he unseamed him from the nave to the chops and fixed his head upon our battlements. Mark, King of Scotland, Mark. Sooner justice had with valor armed compel these skipping kerns to trust their heels. But the Norwegian lord, surveying vantage with new supplies of men, began a fresh assault. Dismayed not this, our captains, Macbeth and Banquo? I must report, they were as cannons overcharged with double cracks. So they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. Except they meant to bathe in reeking wounds or memorize another Golgotha, I cannot tell. But I am faint. My gashes cry for help. Whence camest thou? From Fife, great king. Where the Norwegian banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict. Till that Bolognus bridegroom, lapped in proof, confronted him with self-comparisons, point against point, rebellious arm against arm, curbing his lavish spirit, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness. Oh. <laughs> 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 
No more. That thane of Cordal shall deceive our bosom interest. Go pronounce his present death. And with his former title, greet Macbeth. Speak, if you can. <laughs> All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glams. All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cordor. All hail Macbeth, that shalt be king hereafter. <laughs> Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that sound so fair? In the name of truth, are ye fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly you show? My noble partner you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope that he seems wrapped with all. To me, you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me who neither beg nor fear your favours nor your hate. Lesser than Macbeth and greater, not so happy yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. I know I'm Thane of Glams, but how of Corder? The Thane of Corder lives, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief. See from whence you're the strange intelligence. Speak, I charge you. Although they vanished to the air, and what seemed corporal melted his breath into the wind. Children shall be kings. You shall be king. I am Thane of Cordor too, went it not so. Did the self same chin and words? Bank one Macbeth! All hail! Bank one and Macbeth! All hail!
king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. We are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks. Yes. Only to herald thee into his sight, not pay thee. And for an earnest of a greater honour, he bade me from him call thee... Thane of Cordor! <laughs> In which edition hail, most worthy Thane? For it is thine. Can the devil speak true? Thane of Cordor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet? But under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did line the rebel with hidden help and vantage, or that with both he labored in his country's wrath. I know not. But treason's capital confessed and proved have overthrown him. <laughs> 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 The greatest has behind. <laughs> All right, thanks for your pins. I do you <laughs> not hope your children <laughs> shall be kings. And those that gave the thane of Coddle to me promised no less to them. That trusted home might yet enkindle you unto the crown besides the thing of Cordor, but tis strange. And oftentimes, to win us to a harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. Mm. 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 Two truths are told, as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success commencing in a truth? If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth infix my hair and make my seated heart knock in my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. If chance will have me king, why chance me crown thee without my star? Come what come me, time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Ah. Oh. Oh. Worthy Macbeth, we stay up on your leisure. Give me your favour. My dull brain was wrought for things forgotten. <laughs> Let us toward the king. <laughs> <laughs> Think upon what hath chanced, and at more time, the interim having weighed it, let us speak of free hearts, each other. Very gladly. Till then, oh. enough. Oh. Come, friend. Oh. <laughs>
is execution, Don Cordell. Very frankly, he confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like the leaving it. He died as one that had been studied in his death, to throw away the dearest thing he owed as twere a careless trifle. There's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. They met me in the day of success. And I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned and desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. Whilst I stood, wrapped in the wonder of it, came misses from the king, who all hailed me, Thane of Cawdor. of Cawdor! By which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with the Hail, Hail king. king. That shall be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee. Lay it to thy heart, and farewell. Glams thou art, and cordor, and shalt be what thou art promised. O oh, worthiest cousin, the sin of my ingratitude even now was heavy on me, which thou hast less deserved that the proportion both of thanks and payment might have been mine. Only I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all can pay. The service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee and will labour to make thee full of growing. Noble Banquo, that has no less deserved nor must be known no less to have done so. Let me enfold thee and hold thee to my heart. If I grow, the harvest is your own. <laughs> Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest, know we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm and we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland. <laughs> which honour must not unaccompanied invest him only, but signs of nobleness like stars shall shine on all deserves. <laughs> From hence to Inverness, bind us further to. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife if you'd approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy Cordor. The 
Prince of Cumberland. That is a step in which I must fall down, or else, or leap, for in my way it lies. Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. The eye wink at the hand, yet let that be which the eye fears when it is done to see. Hie thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him, who were it so, would have him form for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our thane is coming. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose. If it were done when it is done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his surcease success, that but this blow might be the be all and the end all here. But here upon this bank and shoal of time we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here, that we but teach bloody instructions which, being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself.
Besides this, Duncan, I've borne his faculties so meek. I've been so clear in his great office. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which overleaps itself and falls on the other. Why have you left the chamber? We will proceed no further in this business. I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people which would be worn now in the newest gloss not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? On this time, such, I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valour as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that? Which thou esteemst the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would? Pretty peace. I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. I have given suck and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless gums and dashed the brains out had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail, We fail, but screw your courage, the sticking place, and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convinced that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbeck only. When in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two and used their very daggers that they have done it? He dares receive it, other. I am settled. Away and mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know.
close the night, boy. It's husbandry in heaven. Their candles are all out. Oh. A heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers restraining me, the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. <laughs> What's well, sir, not yet at rest? The king is abed. He hath been an unusual pleasure and sent forth great largesse to your offices. This he greets your wife withal by the name of most kind hostess. <laughs> I dreamed last night of the weird sisters. To you, they have showed some truth. But well, I think not of them. Hmm. Yet, when we can entreat an hour to serve, we'd spend it in some words upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. <sighs> if you shall cleave to my consent, when tis, we shall make honour for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it. But still keep my bosom franchised and allegiance clear. I shall be counselled. Hmm. Good repose of one. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Delight to you. Go bid that mistress when my drink is ready. She strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand, come let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind? A false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain? Mine eyes are made the fools of all the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on I bleed and touch in gouts of blood which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. No, or oh. The one half world nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the cut in sleep, and withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf whose howls his watch, thus with a stealthy pace, with Darkwood's ravishing strides towards his design. Thou sure, and firm set earth, hear not my steps which way they walk, for fear thy very stones prate of my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now sits with it. Whilst I threat, he lives. What's to the heat of deeds to cold breath gives? I go. 
and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven. Or to hell. Does I not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? Well, no. Is that a sender? Hi. <gasps> this is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. This one did laugh and sleep, and one cried murder that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and addressed them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and amen. The other, as they had seen me with these hangman hands, listening, their fear, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. So I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep, the innocent sleep, sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care, the death of each day's life. What do you mean? Still I cried sleep no more to all the house. Glams hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cawder shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. You do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go, get some water, and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them and smear the sleepy greens with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again. I dare not. Give me the daggers. Sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. It is the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. What hands are here? Oh, they pluck out my eyes. Neptune's ocean washed this blood clean from my hand. Me when every noise appalls me. But I 
shame to wear a heart to so white. There's a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us off this deed. How easy is it then? Put on your nightgown. Let the occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be oh. not lost so poorly in your thoughts. <sighs> to know my deed, to I best not know myself. Weep, Duncan, with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. Thy master stirring. Right? Is the king stirring, worthy Thane? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring it to him. I know this is of joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. The labor we delight in. Physics pay. That is the door. I'll make so bold as to call, for tis my limited service. Religious murder hath broke open the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. Awake! Awake! Bank wall and don't obey! What's the business? Awake! Speak! Speak! Oh, Bank wall! Bank wall, our royal master is murdered. Oh. Alas! Water in our house. Too clear anywhere. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time. For from this instant, there is nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn, and the mere lees has left this vault to brag of. What is in this? You are, do not note, the spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. By whom? Souls of his chamber, as it seems, are done. Their hands and faces were all badged with blood. So were their daggers which, unwiped, we found upon their pillows. We stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate, and furious? Loyal and neutral in a moment, no man. The expedition of my violent love outran the pause of reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gash staves looked like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There, the murderers, steeped in the colours of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love? And in that heart, courage to make love known. Oh. 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 Oh.
Why do we hold our tongues when most would claim this argument for hours? What may be spoken here when our fate, hid by an auger hole, may rush and seize us? Let's away. Our tears are not yet brewed. Nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Look to the lady. And when we have our naked frailties hid that suffer in exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of what to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God, I stand and tense against the undivulged pretense. I fight of treasonous malice. So do I. So all. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet other all together. Well content. I am well content. What will you do? Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. I'll to England. To Ireland, aye. Our separated fortune shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers in men's smiles. The nearer in blood, the nearer bloody. known who did this more than bloody deed. Those that Macbeth have slain. Alas the day, what good could they pretend? They were suborn. Malcolm and Donald Bane, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Against nature still. Thriftless ambition that will raven up thine own life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He's already named, and goes to Scone to be invested. Thou hast it now. King Koda Glams. Oh. As the weird woman promised, and I fear I played most foully for it. Yet it was said, it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine. Why, by the verities on thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well? And set me up in hope. Blush. No more. Here's our chief guest. 
Aye. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Lay your highness command upon me, to the which my duties are with a most indissoluble tie. Forever knit. Feel not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing. They are cruel parasites, filling their hearers with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, when they withal, we shall have cause of state craving us jointly. How are you to horse? Adieu till you return at night. Goes Fleance with you? Aye, my good lord. A time does call upon us. Well, well. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night. To make society the sweeter welcome, we will keep ourselves till supper time. Come on. Well then, God be with you. To be thus is nothing but to be safely thus. Our fears and bank was stuck deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. There is none but he whose being I do fear. And under him, my genius is rebuked, as it said Mark Antony's was by Caesar. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him. In profit like they held him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my gripe, thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered to make them kings? The seed of Banquo, kings. Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. My lord. Who's there? Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please your highness. Both of you know Banco was your enemy. True, my lord. True, my lord. So is he mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. 
though our lives be in your spirit shine through you. Within this hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves. For it must be done tonight, and something from the palace. Fleons, his son that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart, and come to your none. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight. If it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Say to the king I would attend his leisure for a few words. Nought's had, all spent. Where our desire is got without content, tis safer to be that which we destroy. And by destruction, dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done? It's done. We have scorched the snake. Not killed it. Ere we will sleep on the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Oh, better be with the dead whom we, to gain our peace, have sent to peace than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan's in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst. Nothing can touch him further. Come on. Sure. Gentle, my lord. Sleek over your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. So shall I love, and so I pray be you. Mm. <laughs> Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence, both with eye and tongue, and make our faces visards to our hearts, disguising what they are. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. <sighs> Thou knowest that Banquo and his fleance lives. But in them, nature's copy's not a turn. Mm. <laughs> There's comfort, yet they are assailable. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, there shall be done a deed of dreadful not. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck. Till thou applaud the deed. Scarf up the tender eye of pity. 
pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse while night's black agents to their praise do rouse. The marvellous are my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. There's blood upon my face. Tis Banquo's then. Tis better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. That I did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. Yet, he is good that did the like for Fleance. If thou didst it, thou art the non pareil Most royal, sir. Fleance is scaped. Oh, fucking! Banquo's safe. Safe in a ditch he bides, with twenty trenchant gashes on his head. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled hath nature that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. Not give the cheer. Sweet remembrancer. Uh, no, <laughs> good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. <laughs> <laughs> May it please your highness sit. Here have we now our country's honor roofed, where the graced person of our bank will present, who may I rather challenge for in kindness than pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please, Your Highness, to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Here, my good lord. Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou canst not see I did it. Never shake that gory locks from me. <clears throat> Gentlemen, rise. His Highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. Pray you, keep seat. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought, he will again be well. If much you note him, you shall offend him, and extend his passion. Feed! And regard him not. You a man? Aye, and a bold one that dare look on that, which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan all these flaws and starts. Imposter to true fear would well become a woman's story after a winter's fire authorized by her granddam. Shame itself. Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on a stool. Pretty, see, fear. Hold, look, Lord, no. I'll see you. Why, what care I? Oh, if thou canst nod, speak. 
feet too. If charnel houses and their graves must send those that we bury back, our monuments shall be the moors of kites. What? Quite unmanned in folly? Brains are out and the man would die, and they're an end. But now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns and pushes from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. <laughs> I have a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me. Ah! <laughs> Come, love and health to all, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine, Phil, Phil. <laughs> I drink to the general joy of the whole table and to our dear friend, Banquo, whom we miss, would he wear here? <laughs> To all and him we thirst, and all to all. Fight! I tried my sight! Let the earth hate thee! Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost clear with! Think of this, good peers, but as a thing of custom, tis no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man, dear! I dear! Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, or the hurricane tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble, or be alive again, and dear me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I inhabit, then protest me the baby of a girl! Hence! Horrible shadow! Unreal mockery! <laughs> Heads! Why, so being gone, I am a man again. <laughs> Pity. Sit still. You have displaced the mirth. Broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. Can such things be, and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange, even to the disposition that I owe, when now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blind with fear. Sights, my lord. I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go! At once! Right. And better health attend His Majesty. A kind good night to all. Will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Ogres and understood relations have by maggot pies and chuffs and rooks brought forth the secretest man of blood.
was the night? Almost at odds with morning. Hmm. Which is which? I have say, though, the Macduff, the nicest person at our group, is he? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it by the way, but I will send. There's not one of them but in his house I keep a servant feed. For mine own good, all causes shall give way. I am in blood, stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning where as tedious as go. Strange things I have in head that will to hand. Which must be acted, ere they may be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. I conjure you by that which you profess. How will you come to not answer me? Speak. Demand will answer. There's a knocking at the gate. There's a knocking at the gate. Macbeth. Macbeth, Macbeth, beware Macduff. Beware the Thane of Fife. Be bloody, 
bold and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. And of Macduff, what need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make assurance, double sure, and take a bond of fate. Thou shall not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies in sleep in spite of thunder. Be lion metal, proud, and take no care who chaffs, who frets, or where conspirers are. Macbeth shall never vanquish thee, until great Burnham Wood, to high Dunsinane Hill, shall come against him. That will never be. Who can impress the forest? Bid the tree unfix his earthbound root. Sweet Bodman's good. Um, yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me if your art can tell so much. Shall Banco's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seem to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall on you. Show his eyes. His heart come like shadows, so depart. So stand I accosted in the calendar. My lord. Macduff has fled to England. <laughs> fled to England? Aye, my good lord. Anticipatest my dread exploits. The flighty purpose never is overtook unless the deed go with it. From this moment, the very fustlings of my heart shall be the fustlings of my hand. And even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon Fife, give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool. This did all do before this purpose cool. No truth in your report. I have seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed, yet all this while in a most fast sleep. A great perturbation in nature. 
in this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, what at any time have you heard her say? That, sir, which I will not report after her having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo, you, here she comes. This is her very guise, and upon my life, fast asleep. Observe her, stand close. Here's a spot. Out. Damn spot. Out, I say. One. Two. Why then, tis time to do it. How is murky? Fie, my lord, fie. A soldier and a feared. What need we fear? Who knows it? When none can hold our power to account. Yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? The Thane of Fife had a wife. Where is she now? Go to, go to. You have known what you should not. She has spoke what she should not. I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. <laughs> what a sigh is there. The heart is sorely charged. <laughs> this disease is beyond my practice. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again. Will she go now to bed? Directly. Father whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds to breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds to their deaf pillows will discharge their secrets, Monichi the divine and the physician. 
Oh, ich kann es auch. Look after her. Remove from her the means of all annoyance and silky bites upon her. So good night. My mind, she has mated and amazed my sight. I think. But dare not speak. I have words that will be howled in the desert air where hearing shall not latch them. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. I guess I did. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babe savagely slaughtered. To relate the manner were on the quarry of these murdered deer. To add the death of you. My children too. Wife. Children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from tense. My wife killed too? I have seen. No. Be comforted. Now let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. You say all. Oh, how kind. All my pretty chickens and their dam at one fell swoop. Dispute it like a man. I shall do so. But I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Simple, my dove. They were all struck for thee. Not that I am. Not for their own demerits, but for mine, for sport on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart. Enrage it. Oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes and brag it with my tongue. But gentle heavens, cut short all intermission. Front to front, bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself. Upon my sword's length set him. If he skip, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for the shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day.
done by Malcolm and Macduff. Revenge is burning them for their dear causes, which the bleeding and the grim alarm excite the mortified man. What does the tyrant? Great Dunson ain't he strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad. Others that lesser hate him do call it valiant fury. But for certain, he cannot buckle his distempered cause within the belt of rule. Now does he feel his secret murders sticking on his hands. Those he commands move only in command, nothing in love. Now does he feel his title hang loose about him, like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish thief. Bring me no more reports. Let them fly off. To burn them wood, remove to Dunsinane, I cannot taint with fear. What's the boy, Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? Then fly false things and mingle with the English epicures! The mind I swear by and the heart I bear shall never sag without nor shake with fear. The English force, so please. Double damn thee, black, thou cream faced one! Take thy face. Thanks! Satan! I'm sick at heart when I behold. Satan, I say! This push will cheer me ever or deceive me now. I have lived long enough. My way of life has fallen into the sea, the yellow leaf, and that which should accompany old age as honor, love, obedience. Troops of friends I must not look to have, but in their stead, curses, not loud, but deep, most honor, Breath which the poor heart would fain deny and dare not. Satan! What is your gracious pleasure? What news more? All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. <clears throat> oh, fate, till from my bones my flesh be hot. Give me my armor! Is not needed. Send out more horses! Scour the country round! Hang those that talk of fear! Give me mine armor! How does your patient, doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Mm. Cure her of that. Can still not minister to a mind diseased. Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow. Raise out the written troubles of the brain and with some sweet oblivious antidote cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff that was upon the heart. Therein the patient must minister to himself. <laughs> Throw physic to the dogs, and none of it! Come, put my armor on. Give me my staff, Seaton, send out. <clears throat> Doctor, the fiends fly from me. Come, sir, dispatch! If thou couldst, Doctor, cast the water of my land, Find her disease and purge it to a sound and pristine health, I would applaud thee to the very echo that should applaud again. Pull it off, I say. What rhubarb, senna, or what purgative drug would scour these English hens? You still of them? Ah, my good lord. Your royal preparation makes us hear something. Hmm. I will not be 
afraid of death and pain to burn them for his come to dance and name. Were I from Dunsinane away and clear, profit again should hardly draw me here. for him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery air in report of us. Report of us. It shall be done. We learn no other. For the confident tyrant keeps still in dancing it and will endure our setting down before it. Which is his main hope. For where there is advantage to be given, both more and less have given him the revolt. And none serve with him but constrained things whose hearts are absent too. Still they come. Our castle's strength will laugh a siege to scorn. Here let them lie till famine and the egg you eat them up. Were they not forced with those that should be ours, we might have met them therefore, beard to beard and beat them backward home. What was that noise? I've almost forgot the taste of fears. The time has been my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. I have supped full with horrors. Dionys, familiar to my slaughterous thoughts, cannot once start me. Wherefore was that cry? Queen, my lord. Is dead. She should have died here after. There would have been a time for such a word. My lord? Thou comes to use thy tongue, thy story, quickly. Gracious, my lord. I should report that which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. Well, see? As I did stand my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and anon methought the wood began to move. Fire! Sleep! Let me endure your wrath, if it be not so. Within this three mile may you see it coming. I say, a, a moving growth. Thou speaks false upon 
the next tree shall thou hang alive till famine cling thee. If thy speech be sooth, I care not if thou dost for me as much. Fear not. Burnham would do come to Dunsinane, and now a wood comes toward Dunsinane. Oh! Oh, my knight! If this which he avouches does appear, there is no flying hench, no tarrying here. <laughs> Again, to be a weary of the sun, and wish the estate of the world were now undone. Ring the long bell! Come, Rack. At least we'll die with harness on our back. I must fight the course. Was he that was not born of woman? Such a one am I to fear, or none. What is thy name? Thou well, be afraid to hear it. No, though thou callest thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name's Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No, nor more fearful. <laughs> Ghost was born of woman. Be a slain, and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will hold me still. This way, my lord. The castle is gently rendered. The tyrant's people on both sides do fight. The day almost itself professes yours, and little is to do. Enter, sir, the castle. Gashes do better upon them. Get thee back 
My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. Thou losest labor, as easy mayst thou the trenchant air with thy keen sword and press, as make me bleed. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests. I bear a charmed life, which must not yield to one of women born. <laughs> Spare thy charm. And let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee Duff is from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Cursed be that tongue that tells me so, for it hath killed my better part of man. I'll not fight with thee. And yield thee, coward. And live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll have thee, as our rare amongst us all, painted on a pole and under it. Hey, may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and to be baited with the rabble's cuss. Though Burnham would be come to Dunsinane, an opposed being of no woman born, yet I will try the last. <laughs> Lay on, Macduff, and damn be him that first cries. Hold enough. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Hail, King of Scotland!